Welcome to Creature Creator, a show where I help you recreate your favorite stories and characters at your gaming tables. Welcome back to part two of my Fazbear Summer here on Creature Creator, where I've been making guides for the FNAF entries I've yet to cover in this series. On this episode, we'll be focusing on the absolute gem of a game, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, released just two years after the events of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. Help Wanted marked many firsts for the series. It was the first title to be in 3D, the first to utilize virtual reality, and biggest of all, the very first to be majorly developed by someone other than series founder Scott Cawthon, although he still had a hand in its story. This time, the reins were taken over by the talented developers at Steel Wool Studios, and boy did they knock it out of the park. Rather than simply phoning it in and making a VR cash grab, they instead put in the effort to not only faithfully recreate some of the franchise's best moments, but also set themselves to take the franchise in a whole new direction. If there ever was a game I'd point to as the best showcase of how to reinvigorate a narrative, this would be that game, which is exactly what I'll be discussing today, here on Creature Creator. Hello there, and welcome back. I'm Flintworth, and I have to ask my fellow game masters out there, have you ever given the thought to your legacy? As in, how your game today will affect those of tomorrow? Sure, very few of our campaigns will go on to be as beloved as the ones featured on Critical Role or Dimension 20. But this doesn't mean they are not without value. With every twist of your story, every action made by your players, every roll of the die, your table is helping build a legacy uniquely your own. That collective past can be very useful when it comes to energizing your games in the present. And all it really takes is simply playing out what came before. Whether that be running a familiar encounter from a different angle, or utilizing old characters to kick off new adventures. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted is a shining example of this. I mean, its main selling point is the chance to play the first and arguably first FNAF games in virtual reality. Oh, much to the detriment of our hearts. And yet, it goes above and beyond to being just an adaptation of Freddy's greatest hits. As players slowly learn over time to intersperse through Help Wanted's familiar settings, is the start of a whole new era of terror in this franchise. Obviously, this stealthy brand of sequel can be such an exciting experience for any longtime fans, as they get to reconnect with beloved characters. Yet, it shouldn't be ignored how Help Wanted also serves as a fantastic jumping on point for newcomers as well, as it's not required to have experienced the previous entries in the series to understand this one's story. Sure, it may help them appreciate certain plot elements more, but remember, we are aiming to reward our players here with a living, expanding world, not to punish them for being unaware of every story beat in your campaigns. We want to show them that engaging with your game is a good thing, which is why you would do well to follow Steel Wool's lead by treating such callbacks as a bonus rather than your true end goal, to create a solid story that can stand completely on its own. What's kind of cool though, is that I know a lot of you are already off onto the right track. And that's namely from all the tales you've come to share with me about your games, which I gotta say, it really blows my mind how creative some of you are. Regardless whether you've gotten the chance to run a campaign, FNAF themed or otherwise, I'm going to show you how you can build off your campaigns not to just keep your worlds alive, but their legacies as well. So how do you do it? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the simplest and quickest method would be through using reoccurring characters, like one of your group's favorite NPCs, or maybe an infamous villain that's still kicking about, but with a few changes to liven things up. Kind of like how it is revealed in Help Wanted that William Afton, the series' longtime big bad, once again managed to survive his demise at the end of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. But unlike his past appearances, Ol' Afty didn't come out completely unscathed, as he's now been reduced to nothing more than just a literal glitch in the system, incapable of continuing his reign of terror without the help of others. Reintroducing a once 
prominent villain in a more indirect, diminished role like this can be such an interesting twist for some players, especially if you run them in a way where the party could easily interact with them, like at the prison cell, Hannibal Lecter style. On uh, the flip side, this also opens up the opportunity for your villains to perhaps guide and corrupt your next generation of baddies. Much like how I imagine those looking to recreate help wanted will want to do with any of their own digitized villains. Following this path falls under the second and admittedly a little bit more complicated method of how you can use legacy, making the most of your story's aftermath. In real life, ideas and symbols don't readily disappear. The people who found them may come and go, but their history, their culture, their legacy will live on and can continue to grow well beyond their years. Remembering this reality of our world can be really handy for any GM searching for a way to liven up their campaigns. Why, some of the best narratives out there were played off the ramifications of older tales. For instance, we would have gotten the Lord of the Rings if Bilbo hadn't found the One Ring in The Hobbit, nor would Spider-Man No Way Home be as well received as it was if it were not for the assortment of tales it gave a long overdue emotional closure to. Take note though, in both of these examples, the storylines developed towards their future over dwelling and repeating the past. Not that there's anything wrong with embracing a little nostalgia here and there, but it's far too easy to get caught up in it. And that's the last thing you'd want to end up doing in your games. Believe you and me, I get how tempting it can be to revive dead villains or jeopardize someone the party just saved to raise the stakes. Yet, all this will accomplish is just your players getting demoralized as you slowly undermine everything they've done. And who can blame them? Why should your friends even try if you're going to just invalidate their actions in the end? On the other hand though, if you instead validate their roles in your story, I can guarantee your friends will only become that much more engaged. Also just showing that their actions have weight. Just look at how Help Wanted avoids the same kind of pitfalls entirely. Afton may be back as glitch trapped, but for the most part, he is entirely powerless. All he can do is watch and wave from the sidelines, which, okay, can be pretty damn creepy in its own right. Nevertheless, the ominous weirdo was indeed defeated by the players at the end of Pizzeria Simulator, and now has no choice but be a passive observer, with little to do but wait. Wait for the chance to find, corrupt, and control some innocent fool who dug too deep into what he is to carry on his work where he no longer can tread. Setting up and carrying out a scheme like this is exactly what you will be looking to do for any kind of help wanted recreation. It doesn't matter what environments your team goes to, what dungeons you set up, nor what monsters you throw at your players. The heart of help wanted story is all about its villain accomplishing their end game. Everything else in between is just window dressing. Hence why I didn't make a 5e stat sheet for Glitch Trap like I did for the other animatronics. He isn't a creature you can run. He is an idea, a living legacy, and he should be treated as such. Which means you can run just about anything as your main story while you slowly carry out this dark plot in the background. Like maybe someone stumbled upon a cursed remnant of your villain's last battle, or possibly their ghost is invading people's dreams. Or perhaps a relative of theirs found their secret lair and is using it for their own purposes. Whatever the method you choose, there really is nothing like seeing the essence of a villain reborn in the hands of another. And the sweet thing is, you can even use this route to introduce new storylines or characters they haven't gotten the chance to run yet. So for any of my viewers out there struggling to get their own FNAF adventures started at their tables, you should really consider this backdoor option as your chance for some surprise animatronic misadventures. My final recommendation is no matter if you either end up surprising the party with your villain successor or playing off the outcome of some bygone event, do so in a way that will really subvert your player's expectations. As I mentioned before, don't live in the past. Find a fun twist to really take things to the next level, even if it ends up just being something as simple as fashionated to celebrate a holiday. Hell, once for April Fools, I took an old classic dungeon of ours and reskinned it to be like the dungeon from the first level of Legend of Zelda, with the classic music and everything. On the other hand, doubling down on your friends' expectations can be fun in its own right. As the saying goes, go big or go home. 
And boy, did Steel Wool go big with their follow-up to Help Wanted. Get pumped, superstars, because the next video is going to be radical. Next time on Pizza Crater. Hey kids, do you like pizza, play games, and party like it's 1999? Then you should ask your parents to bring you on down to the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. Here at our state-of-the-art facility, you can do everything from bowling to go-karting to even playing miniature golf. And don't worry, parents, safety is our top priority here at the Pizza Plex. You can rest assured that your little rock stars are in our capable hands. Hey, thank you all so much for watching here to the end. I am so happy I got this out in a timely manner to you all. I uh, got big plans for this next video and it might take a bit longer to get out only for the fact that in September, I'm gonna be marrying the love of my life, Jade Brightwin. So I might be a little bit distracted. Speaking of Jade, make sure to come hang out with us during our hangout streams every Thursday night at 6.30 Central Standard Time. You know, we go and play the best and greatest of horror games for your entertainment. And last but not least, if you haven't already, consider liking, subscribing, commenting down below what your favorite part of the franchise has been so far, and or even let me know what you'd like to see in future Creature Crater videos. If you don't, no worries. We still find you beautiful either way. Take care.